everyone, this is Michael here, and I want to do another episode on credit cards and travel. Today, our topic will be on the credit card companies, big fork brands that are out available right now for travelers. So I'll be talking about American Express, Chase, City, and Capital One. All of these four brands are the ones that are the cards that people are using nowadays, and I want to discuss the benefits, travel partners, and other benefits that can be applied and that could interest for you if you want to apply for these cards. Currently, I actually have the Capital One Venture X and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I'm not in the skin for American Express currently, at least for the cards. I do have some co-branded, and I don't have any city cards, but I do have some co-branded as well. But like I said, enough about that. Let's get to the let's get to the discussion and start talking about these credit card companies. Credit card company I want to discuss is Chase JP Morgan. Like I said, I'm not biased. I actually have the card and I'm going to explain the benefits and see if it interests anyone here, but they have two travel cards in their their bucket basically, one premier card and one mid-tier card. Their premier one is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which like I said has a good amount of benefits which I'm going to show here which includes travel perks such as airline credit, it has a Prider Pass lounge access, and global entry credit. And also they just opened up their new Chase um, airline lounges as well, which I heard is coming up soon, or I think it's either live, so don't quote me on that. And also, it also comes though with a hefty $550 annual fee. Most of it can be offset with some of the benefits, but like I said, it comes with a package. Definitely a very, high tier travel card to use as travelers and recommend it as well. So definitely in consideration if you're a big traveler and you like Chase as well. Going on to the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is a card I have. It's a mid-tier card with a $95 annual fee and I've discussed many times in my videos. And I'll pull the benefits once again here, as you can see here. Like I said, it has the 3X multipliers on dining. And like I said, it doesn't have a ton of travel benefits, it doesn't have the priority pass. But the reality is that if you look at here, it has that one hotel credit it comes with, which is okay. But otherwise, like I said, at least for the Chase brand, and it's all about the transfer partners and it's got a strong line of, of transfer partners. I'm gonna pull this right now and you can see here. And at least to me, um, one thing that's really, it separates them at least in the travel game when it comes to traveling, it's actually the hotel. And I've used Hyatt hotels a lot and I don't consider them a lower tier brand. I consider them pretty good. I used it in my last travel trip and I'm just showing an example here of the redemption here. As you can see, pulling the graphic here, I'm looking to actually go to Charlotte in a couple weeks and I'm gonna show you the cost and the points per cent actually. And you can see here, when you break down the cash price here, it actually comes up to over two cents per point, which is really good. I mean, in general, once you transfer your chase points there and to compare it, Chase also has Marriott, and if you look at Marriott here, and I'm gonna pull up the screen as well, uh, the price and the, um, the points it would cost, and you can see here, Marriott is just very stingy with their points, 60,000 per night compared to 6,000 for Hyatt, and then the price, it's such a low point rate of 0.3, I mean, it's just super small. And you can see, that's the reason why I like Chase, that, and it has a great amount of um, travel partners as, as I'll pull it up once again. It looks like they're very strong domestically, you know, with JetBlue and Southwest. If you are a domestic traveler, definitely that is where Chase is very strong. It does lack a lot of international partners, but like I said, it's once again, they're known, very good reputable, and I have it on, and I definitely recommend it. And I'll definitely recommend the Chase Preferred in the link below. And like I said, if you wanna check it out, um, preferral links help, like I said, but like I said, it's all up to you and what you think going forward for Chase. So that's really, in essence, a summary on Chase. Um, like I said, great company, great travel benefits, definitely all around good lineup on the card. So we're gonna start with the second company and all the glamour and glitz that I've heard is American Express. It is definitely a very branded card and it has a couple travel cards in their lineup. Mainly I'll be talking about the American Express Platinum and the American Express Gold card. I don't have any of them. I've heard a lot. I contemplate getting both, may get some in the future, but we'll start with the Platinum, which is their premier travel card. 
And geez, it's got a ton of benefits, which I'm going to put up here and, ex and just kind of discuss here. It has um, a hotel credit, $200. I mean, it really shines with the Centurion Lounge and Delta Sky Club access and other more lounge, airport lounges, um, clear membership and Uber cash, um, Equinox credit. It just goes on and on. I think there's Uber cash credit. I think I said already, just so much going on. The problem is that 600 plus an annual fee is ridiculous. It can be offset, but like I said, the only thing offset if you can use all the benefits. But like I said, on, on, unlike a lot of his competitors, that's crazy amount of money to spend on the annual fee. And it's really, really either on the same level or better than the Chase Sapphire Reserve, in my opinion. Um, as we go to the American Express Gold card, this is a good combo card to pair really with the Platinum or another Premier Travel card because it really shines with its multipliers, the, the Forex multiplier on groceries and dining out. And like I said, we got to eat, right? And that's where it shines out. I mean, I will notate, and this is the kind of reason why I haven't gotten the gold card, is that the Forex on groceries applies to U.S. supermarkets, which I won't get into, but I don't always buy groceries at U.S. supermarkets. So that's one thing stopping me. Otherwise, I probably have the gold card. But like I said, combo those two together, and you've got a group duo for American Express. And so as we pull up their airline partners and hotels, we can see here, you can see that, like I said, they're, if we're covering the chase, once again, they're, they're, they're very, very strong, like I said, but they are lacking that domestic part that um, Chase has over them, which is JetBlue, Southwest, United, and Aeroplan to me, I think is a, is a big game changer. They, to me, I would, they, they travel and they can partner with a lot of airlines. And when we look at what they have stronger than Chase, uh, like I said, they're international. That's what I, that's how I picture really a lot of the airlines when we compare and Chase. A lot of the airlines, a lot of the, um, credit cards we're talking about will have a lot of international airlines that Chase doesn't have. And that's why if you really want to use it to your advantage, Spirit Express, Glitz and Glamour, International, it's good. And then lastly on the hotels, they don't, they don't have Hyatt, which like I said, I think it's a big, big no-no, but they do have Hilton and I consider Hilton and Marriott and Hyatt all good brands. So Hilton doesn't, I think their redemption is 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 average cents per point. Still better than my trip that Marriott example. And I actually have a co-parenting Hilton card. So like I said, it's, it's a win in the, um, you know, the American Express game. So definitely those cards are definitely a highly considered. And like, it's just, I forgot to, if, if I didn't say it, that um, gold card does have like a thick 250 or 295 dollar annual fee. So you will rack up annual fees. It will offset. But like I said, I just think that America appeals to the international traveler. It also appears to what people want to be in life, which is more than, I wouldn't say more than what they want to be, but it's definitely a, a lot of spending and a lot of annual fees. So that's really my review on America Express. The next car company we want to talk about is Capital One, and I have the Venture X actually. It's kind of a personal card slash side hustle card. Um, I, like I said, um, they really have one good travel card in their lineup. They have others. But the Venture X, as I'm showing here, and I, like I said, I actually have it right here. I'm holding it actually. Um, great card. Um, it's considered a catch-all card because it, when I pull the benefits here, and let's let's look into it here, you can see it has the six-month cult of business, which I actually use internationally for museums. Um, nice. I mean, you save 10, 20 bucks. I don't want to delude. Stuff like that. Um, the 300 travel credit statement, awesome. Like it's money back in your pocket. And then obviously the access to lounges as well, priority pass, plaza premium, global entry, PSA, teacher credit. And um, lastly, the anniversary bonus, which I'm still waiting almost a year for my membership, 10,000 points. And if you combine all those benefits with the $395 annual fee, it comes up to $400 in credit, which actually means you pay $5 back to yourself. So it's a plus five basically. So that's, that's why I like Capital One. Like they've made strides and they're coming back on that. So yeah, I mean, otherwise, let's look at the travel partners for, for Capital One here. As we go down here, you can see there, once again, uh, really, really weak in the hotel game here with no Hyatt, no Mary, no Hilton, no IH, no, none of that premier hotel stuff really. And then when we compare the, the, the um, sorry, the travel airlines, 
they're, they've got a lot of skin in the game in the international. Once again, not as crazy on the domestic with Chase. And if you compare it to Amex, they don't have, geez, I mean, they don't have Delta. And that's really what I'm thinking here. But they have a lot of international airlines. That actually, none of the partners like TAF, for example, which is Air Portugal. And um, Turkish Airlines, too, because Turkish is kind of, some partners have it, but it's very sneaky with that business class. It's, I heard it's very good. So um, Capital One overall, great card. Um, really coming strong with Adventure X, and the benefits are really good. I highly recommend it. The 2X multiplier is really good for all purchases. This is the reason why I have a card. Um, and, of course, the, I think the 10X on hotels and rent cards is ridiculous, too. So once again, a very good card for travel. So definitely a mid-tier travel card. Not the highest end, but a good keeper if you can leverage it with another branded card. Last one here is City, and they're kind of lost in shuffle between all the glitz and glam of the three I've mentioned. They actually have, like I said, kind of one premier travel card, the City Premier. Um, low annual fee, as you look at the benefits here, and you can see here a $95 annual fee. Travel perks is pretty weak with basically this $100 reduction hotel stay. If applied at a cost of $500 or more, kind of weird. Um, otherwise, it's kind of construed actually as a catch-all travel card because it basically as we look here at the the benefits it's got 3x on gas dining travel and other hotels and on supermarkets now i don't know if that's u.s supermarkets but that's pretty good i mean it basically means you have a one card setup and like i said it's it's not bad the lack of travel benefits is the reason why people probably aren't going for it but the catch-all 3x is pretty good you know, you're losing out on Forex, stuff like that. But, I mean, if you really want to simplify your car lap, City is the way to go, especially for that Premier. A good signing bonus as well. And now let's go look at the travel partners, as you can see here. Um, like I said, it's it's got a good amount of travel partners. Once again, strong internationally, just like it is. Once again, same with Capital One. Very weak in the hotel game. And once again, not having British Airways is kind of a loss. Southwest United really hurts it. No Delta, no Finnair, stuff like that. No Air Canada. And I think that might be the reason why, um, really, why City is kind of not gaining a lot of attraction because, they're to me, they're like a poor man's Capital One. Capital One basically has all the travel partners, but a little bit more on the side. Um, just recapping, like I said, um, Capital One has Air Canada, Finnair, and I like I said, Air Canada to me is a big one. So really, with, with City... It's a good card. I think they need to get another card in their lineup or something to complement the Premier because, or bolster their travel partner lineup because it's, it's pretty weak. And so, like I said, it's still a good card. Simplified. I'm thinking of getting the City Premier game, but I kind of want to see what's going forward in their, their card lineup for City. But otherwise, solid. And like I said, very simple if you want to be a simple travel travel uh, gamer right here. So I just want to appreciate everyone for staying to the end of the video. And like I said, if you find this information useful, Please hit that like button and subscribe as I hope to provide more content going forward. And like I said, I'll pose this question. What kind of credit cards do you have in your lineup? Chase, Saf, Chase, Marin Express, City, or even Capital One? Please let me know in the comments below. And like I said, every card company has different benefits, so feel free to peruse those benefits. Otherwise, like I said, everyone, life is short. Travel more, everyone.